Hi everyone and welcome to another teardown and reassembly video. This time I have an HP ProDesk 400G1 in the tower version. During the video I will completely disassemble this machine and then put it back together. While doing so, I will also upgrade the memory and replace the current hard drive with an SSD. And if everything still works after that, I will also perform some benchmarks to check how this machine, which can be considered relatively old already, still performs today. In an earlier video I did something similar with the ProDesk 490 G2 and the much newer ProDesk 400 G6. This is a G1 and as you could probably guess, this means the first generation. Being released in 2013, it was also the first time HP started to use the name ProDesk for this series of PCs and the predecessor was still branded HP Compact Pro. This new ProDesk series came with 4th generation Intel Haswell CPUs. The model we have here, according to the sticker, has a Core i5-4570 installed, 4GB of DDR3 and a 500GB hard drive. The same sticker also tells us that the original owner decided to downgrade the bundled Windows 8 version to Windows 7, which was pretty common. Anyway, after performing the upgrade, I will install Windows 11 instead, for which I can still use that originally bundled license. The machine still looks pretty nice. The shiny border could be seen a bit as too flashy today maybe, but all in all, it has a clean and professional look. From top to bottom, we can find a full-sized 5.25 inch DVD writer, power button, 2x USB 2, 2x USB 3 and audio. On the back, we first have the power supply and power connector, 2x PS2, serial port, more USB ports, Gigabit Ethernet, VGA, DVI and audio again. To open up the machine, there are two thumb screws that can be released to remove the side panel. Inside we can easily spot the CPU and cooler, memory and hard disk. I'm a bit surprised though to see that this is a 2.5 inch drive. These are more common in laptops and as it's a mechanical drive, performance won't be very good. Before we start the disassembly, let's also have a better look at the power supply. After turning it upside down, we can see this one is capable of delivering up to 300 watt. Not too bad. Time to get everything out now. First of all, I will disconnect the drives. and remove the SATA cables that were connected to them. Next up are the ATX and P4 power connectors. Followed by the case fan and CPU fan. Now the rest of the connectors to the motherboard. From audio, PC speaker, front USB and power button and LED. All connectors are removed from the motherboard, but let's get those drives out first, starting with the 2.5 inch hard drive. Five hundred gigabyte matches the sticker on the case. But I really don't think this one is original here, especially as it clearly is labeled as a laptop hard disk and it was fixed with a different set of screws. Possibly the original drive died at some point and it got replaced with whatever spare part was available. To remove the DVD drive, I will first need to remove the front panel, which can easily be done by unclipping the three clips that hold it in place. Then we can simply remove the screws and can slide it out through the front. Next to get out is the motherboard. As I was not sure if the CPU cooler is fixed to a backplate on the motherboard itself or all the way to the case through holes in the motherboard, I decided to take this one off first. There we go. Underneath it we can see the Core i5 CPU but also a bunch of crusty old thermal paste, which we definitely will replace later. At first glance, I think it wasn't needed to get a CPU cooler out before removing the motherboard, 
but it has to come out at some point anyway, so that's fine. Let's now finally remove the rest of the screws. And once these are all out, we can get the mainboard out of the case. I already cleaned up the CPU and after getting it out, we can see that the single DDR3 DIMM of 4GB is installed, matching the sticker again. The CPU can easily be removed as well by opening up the socket and indeed, as expected, a Core i5-4570 is present. This CPU has 4 cores and runs at a base frequency of 3.2 GHz with a turbo boost frequency up to 3.6 GHz. We'll see how well this will perform in the benchmarks of course. Everything is out now, so time to have a good look at the motherboard. In the center we have the CPU socket with two DIMM slots right from it. There clearly are preparations on the board for two more, but the actual slots aren't there. Here we have a PCIe X16 and 3x1. 4 SATA ports, front LED and power button, parallel port, front USB 3, 2 times front USB 2, PC speaker and front audio. We also have a header for a serial port, case fan and CPU fan. ATX power connector and P4 power connector and a CMOS reset jumper. Here's a nice overview of all components. Starting with the motherboard, CPU, original 4GB of memory and 4GB additional memory, original hard disk and SSD replacement, DVD writer and CPU cooler. Time to put everything back, starting with the CPU. We simply need to orientate it correctly and then can insert it in the socket and get that one closed. For the memory, there are only two slots, which we'll have to both populate, so no need to worry about dual channel order. As the CPU fan is fixed to the backplate, I can put that one back before putting the board in the case as well. First, of course, a bit of thermal paste, and then we can get it fixed. All done here. For the rest of the assembly, we need to first get the main board back in the case and get it fixed. Once that is done, all connectors go back to where they belong. And the last step is to get the drives back in, starting with the DVD writer, which goes in from the front and then can be fixed with the two screws on the side. It also needs to be connected to power and to SATA. The next drive is our SSD, which will replace that slow 2.5 inch hard drive. It goes in in the same place where that drive was installed, but it's pretty clear that this wasn't really an HP original, but it does the job. This one can now be connected to power and SATA as well. And all that's left is to put back the front panel, which has some hooks on the right. and clicks back in place on the left side after turning it and then the side panel.
We are ready to test now if things worked as expected. F10 can be used to enter the BIOS. And let's have a quick look at what system information tells us here first. We can see the i5-4570 and the two DDR3 DIMMs. Storage shows us the 250GB SSD and DVD writer. Everything exactly as expected. I already pre-installed Windows 11 and that seems to boot fine as well. System About shows us the same as the BIOS. Now, before doing more tests, let me get through Windows Update and also install all missing drivers. A few reboots later, everything is up to date and all drivers are present as you can see. Time for the first benchmark, which is Geekbench 5. I'll be running the newer Geekbench 6 as well, but as I have a lot of previous results, I still prefer to compare with version 5 as well. Two thousand nine hundred and six is what we get. Nothing too spectacular, but in line with the expectations. Next up is Geekbench six, as I mentioned. This one takes a lot longer. And the result is 2854. Compared to the 6th Gen i5 in the Optiplex 7040 Micro, this really isn't too bad. To measure the disk performance, I'll be running AGA system test. Four hundred forty one megabytes per second write and five hundred and three megabytes per second read. It won't get much better than that using a SATA SSD. So again, decent performance here. That was it for the video. There isn't a lot more to say actually. The HP Prodest G1 still works very well today, and although performance isn't top notch, it's definitely still more than usable for basic tasks. It's a nice machine to work on and pretty silent during usage. With that RAM and SSD upgrade, it's ready to serve for a few more years. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the video and if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this kind of videos, don't hesitate to subscribe as well for more of the same. Thanks again and hope to see you back here soon.